Well, and it's like, okay, if I'm not a surgical candidate, then what am I? problem however I do think it is this because that's what I haven't had from the other doctors because yeah. it was I'm confident I that it's not Chiari but, but I don't know what it is it's like okay well then I don't believe you if you don't have another idea but you're confident that it's not that one yeah. you know so he said well it's not this However, I'm confident that this may be a thing. And not only may that be a thing, but we're gonna do the testing to figure out whether or not that's the case. Yeah. And while we're at it, while you're waiting, here's two different options yeah. of how to handle your symptoms until then versus, well, you're gonna have to wait yeah. and that's it, you know? Well, and it wasn't, here, let's give you more narcotics that don't work that might make you an addict. Yeah, well, I was like, so it's not an opioid and it's not addictive? He's like, nope. I was like, hell yeah. He's, I know. Yeah, he's, and he said, well, you can't take opi opioids with this. I'm like, well, they're not working anyways, so of course I'll quit taking them, you know? Well, and you weren't a big fan of the opioids anyway. No. Even if they had worked, which they don't. Well, and it's like, why would I keep taking something I know it doesn't work in order to not take this new medication, which could work and isn't addictive. But yeah, I like the fact that he said, well, I think, I don't think it's this. However, I think it's this. And here is what we're gonna do until then. And I know a guy. And I know a guy. <laughs> that was the best thing. Not only do I have him in my cell phone. Hang on just one second. Well, and the fact that he said, you know, I'll call him later or I'll shoot him an email. He called the guy in the office while we were still there. So you had an answer before you walked out the door. Mm -hmm. Well, and of course the test result that he wanted was the one thing I didn't print out because I thought it was the one thing he didn't need. But he said to just bring in the copy of your next one. CSF leaks is just happens to work at Stanford but if I hadn't been in the office and you know push the issue, push the issue and said hey I want this I'd still be sitting there having you know twiddling my thumbs still not knowing what the heck was going on well you know I was read reading something on the dysautonomia page they posted this like infographic thing and it talked about how like 60 percent or something it was a high number of POTS patients and other dysautonomia patients have to seek medical treatment more than a hundred miles from where they live because they can't find it where they live yep us dysautonomia peeps kind of got the short end of the stick on that one where usually wherever it is that you live unless you're on the east coast has no idea what the heck this autonomia is in general mm -hmm. has never heard of POTS has never heard of neurocardiogenic syncope you know neurally mediated syncope whatever you call it and so you have to end up traveling miles and miles outside of where you live to find someone who has a clue which is stupid but it's how it is mm -hmm. The next question is, what do I do about work? Uh, I would tell them whatever you're comfortable telling them. Tell them that Stan 
Bradford has an idea of what's going on, that you have an appointment with the specialist that deals with it in six weeks, that they seem to be pretty confident that they know what it is. It's just going to be several months of treatment. Yeah. And you just kind of go, okay, you know, what do you need from me in order for me to be able to return to work? Or is it best for me to put my employment on hold until they're done putting me back together? Yeah. And back? He said that I could switch into a different job if I was qualified, if he had a doctor's note saying what my limitations were. Well, and here's the other thing, too. You know your body better than anybody. Are you up to sitting at a desk for 40 hours a week? I Currently. just don't know. But I feel like I'm going to go nuts if I just sit on my butt for the next four months, too. So it's like, well, well I don't know what to do. Well, and maybe you see if they have a part-time position. Because you can actually still get medical benefits with a part-time position. You just have to pay a little bit more. But paying a little bit more is still cheaper than only having the one insurance. If we can do this whole deal without doing any kind of... Peeps be cray! If we can do this whole thing without surgery, that'd be nice. Recovery would be so much better. Yeah. Well, and my question becomes... One, if it is a CSF leak, will it only take one patch? Mm -hmm. If it takes more than one patch, how long does that make this whole process in general? And then, secondly, what's my kind of like body usability after this because it could be the NCS is being caused by the leak and it goes away or I have the NCS that's just how it is but my body still may be more usable after the leak is fixed but then the question becomes where is my ability level and with that ability level, what careers are available yeah. in order to... Well, and I think that even if you still had the NCS, you would still be more functional after the fix, because we basically got your NCS under control until the CSF leak issue started being yeah. an issue. Like, I still had, like, pre sinkable days and rougher days, but I wasn't actually having, like, episodes. Yeah. Well, and you figured out, you know, the saline thing, and you figured out the, the normal light and the stockings and whatnot, so your bad days were much fewer and further between once you got that figured out. Mm -hmm. So, if we could get your pain level under control... Quality of life would still be better. Quality of life would be so much better. And your, your bad days would be much fewer and further between. And even if they ended up doing surgery to to do the patch, it would, it would be a still, little yeah. tiny incision. They cut just the, the spinal cord, whatever, to, to get in there and patch, or, you know, just so shut like the spinal cord dura. So they're not cutting into your skull. They're not taking skull out. They're and not leaving my brain unprocessed. Yes. They would just be cutting through the muscle to get to the dura matter and sewing the dura shut. That is so much less invasive than a curie fix. Yeah. And you'd have a little tiny scar probably about that big instead of the zipper mm head. -hmm. My question is, well, they say that most, that like a lot of type 1 Chiari's can be non-symptomatic. I just hope it stays that way. Well, and chances are, if you have a leak... It may be causing a sagging be, brain syndrome. Right. It may be causing the type 1 to become symptomatic at points because the, <gasps> the fluid is leaking out so your brain is coming down. I never thought of that. 
Whereas if everything, you know, if they, there wasn't a leak, the pressure of the, the CSF fluid would be what it's supposed to be. So your yeah. brain wouldn't be Where sagging. before the leak, it could be I had the Chiari, but it was non-symptomatic because it wasn't cutting off the flow. But when the water, basically when the water level sank down, the boat did too, and the boat got caught in the channel. It's like draining a bathtub, and there's a washcloth stuck in the hole. You're calling my brain a washcloth? Well, it's kind of the same concept. <laughs> so, but if you have a CSF leak, it means that the pressure in the plumbing is not where it's supposed to be, which means your brain is probably not where it's supposed to be, which would also explain why when you hang upside down, it feels better because you're probably not leaking at that point and your brain is back yeah, up inside not, your head. Not where it's pinching to my be. brain in the low channel there. And this is the ocean. When I met my doctor at Stanford, we went over my symptoms from top to bottom and we attempted to look at my imagery. However, my CDs all were encrypted. Therefore, big surprise, they couldn't look at them. But what he got from my symptoms and from my previous imaging I had managed to send to him, he was convinced, like my other doctor, that my QRI malformation was not symptomatic. The question for me was, well, if it's not a QRI malformation, then what is it? He suspects that I may have a CSF leak, which means cerebrospinal fluid leak. And there's different ways you can get them a lot of times in things such as car accidents, but you can get them spontaneously or if you have some kind of connective tissue disease. Now, I'm not sure if I have a connective tissue issue, however, it has been suspected for a while, so I suspect that may be something we look into. What he told me was is that CSF leaks could be very personalized and that each person could be different to a point, although there are some where the symptoms are pretty much the same across the board. He told me that there was a person at Stanford who specifically dealt with CSF leaks and that he would be very excited to meet me. And the fact that he not only thought that no, the CSF wasn't, or not the CSF, but the Chiari malformation wasn't a problem, but that he actually had a new idea and a new direction was really exciting to me. So he called the person who deals with CSF leaks in the office while I was there, which I thought was so great because it seems like no one's ever motivated to actually get you to the people that can help you. So on the spot, he said that I was a very interesting, possibly complex case and asked him when I would be able to see him soonest. And so it will be six weeks when I see this new doctor, a doctor named Dr. Carol, I believe. But he is, I guess, the leading mind on CSF leak. So I'm very happy to know that I'm going to be well taken care of. So what do I do in the next six weeks until I meet this doctor? Well, we went over pain management ideas and I told him that I had been on several different opioids and other pain medications such as Tramadol, Narco, and Nucinta. So what he told me was is that he wants to test me on a form of medication that is very similar to Narcan, which is the medication that they give patients when they're overdosing in the hospital. So the fact that I was not only not getting an opioid, but that it was also not addictive was extremely exciting for me because I have always been very sensitive of opioids and other addictive substances because I've seen addiction in my family. My second option for pain relief, which is something I didn't even realize existed, was that he wants me to do what is called a lidocaine infusion, in which you go to an infu infusion center and stay there for two hours while they infuse you with a lidocaine mix, which 
from what the doctor described to me, basically shuts down your nervous system by around 50% and kind of reboots it, kind of like turning your computer off and on again to see if it fixes the problem. So I'm hopeful and a little nervous about it, but mostly hopeful that this will kind of help my pain level until we're able to get it resolved. Now, in order to fix a CSF leak, if that is what this is, they do what's called a blood patch, where they take your own blood and infuse it into the area where the leak is, and it basically plugs the hole and allows the hole to heal. In order to find the holes, they have to do a spinal tap with a contrast in order to send me to a CT scan and see where the contrast shows up to see where the leaks are. I am definitely not excited about that part, but at this point, anything that can help me and help me resolve this issue is worth it. So I have to do a spinal tap next in order to fix the leak if I do have one. Some people, it takes a couple blood patches to work. Others, they actually have to have surgery in order to fix it. However, the surgery is nowhere near what a Chiari decompression surgery is. So even if it is a CSF leak, the worst case scenario is still better than where I was standing at before. So overall, I was very happy with how I was treated. He sat down with me, he paid attention, he made sure that that was my time to talk about my problems and how we're going to fix them. And for the first time in a long time, I have hope that things can get better and I may be able to kind of move on with my life. So I'm pretty excited. So I'm holding my breath and hoping that we finally found the answer after almost a year and a half of looking. So crossing my